Okay, I technically should start this at least with my hat off. Hi, I'm in Ferrera still, of course. And, um, because whirls can be this gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I've got butterflies landing all over me. This is hilarious. You stand still in Ferrera and you're going to get, like, so much love from butterflies and little flies and bees and it's really phenomenal. So, I started coming up this beautiful little hill, tiny little narrow path. You can see how narrow this path is. And when I looked at it, it was all just straight up. And I thought it was going to go straight up just for a, you know, for a few yards. But actually, it ended up winding me way high. Like, I've been walking straight up for at least 20 minutes, maybe even longer. And it was a hard, steep, <laughs> super steep up. And <clears throat> here I am, out here, with the daisies. Can you see those daisies? <sighs> I just love it here. I don't know how to express how much I love it here, and how happy I've been, and how clear I've gotten. I um, put together my Paris retreat, and it came together so solidly, so smoothly. I know what it is I want to do in Paris. I know. I know what I can do in Paris. It's that, that really precious knowing. Like knowing who you are, knowing that you're in full alignment with your own art and your own craft. That's what this Paris retreat is about for me. And it came together so beautifully. And um, I was following my intuition and I sent out an email to my clients on Wednesday, you know, to my, my client database and my, my blog readership. I got a great response, man. They were just like, yeah, let's do this. So things are off and running, feeling very optimistic about this. And um, it's funny, though, because I think I started putting together the retreat. It came to my mind exactly what I wanted. And it took me about a week to get everything organized, to get the website set up and all this stuff, and get everything launched. But then, right before that, I was doing a lot of writing. A lot of writing. And my writing stopped when Paris started, you know, when, the, when I started planning. And then I started getting really, really doubtful. I'm going to take off my hat so you can see, or, yeah, I wear my hat like a hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started getting really doubtful about my writing because I just wasn't doing it. I haven't written for a week. And for me as a writer, that's a little scary. Can you hear that stream? That little trickle of water. Man. So it's really scary to be a writer who can't write. This is my experience. I'm not, you know, I haven't published a book, but I still be trying to write, you know? And um, I feel like, oh, I was feeling, I have a different perspective now because I did a lot of meditation on this here in the hills. And I was feeling like, God, if I don't write, then I'm not a writer, and this book isn't going to get done. And I wanted to get this book done by, you know, in, um, while I'm here in Ferrara. I wanted to get the bulk of my stories written while I was here in Ferrara. But I'm also, I realize, I also, while I'm here in Ferrara, want to be open to the healing. And the healing is coming in much more strongly than the... Um, than the writing, you know? Like, I'm spending a lot of time listening, being in nature, obviously, and listening, looking at how I really feel about things, you know? And when I go into that, there isn't, there isn't an impulse to share my, my feelings through the written word. 
And when I try to share my feelings through the written word right now, this is just within the last week, I kind of get this feeling of resistance. I get this feeling of um, disconnection. And what I've learned is that you don't ignore, you do what's authentic. And so I said, okay, I don't feel like writing right now. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do what feels natural. And so, of course, I was doing Paris, putting together the Paris retreat. And once I got that all established, then I felt this kind of let down, like, okay, well, I should be writing now. I'm done with Paris. And then this morning I got up to go running and I was tired. You know, I felt really sluggish. And I went out running anyway. Again, not doing what I feel, but... Um, you know, just pushing, pushing, pushing through, trying to be disciplined, you know, because they say you got to be disciplined in order to get what you want. And in order to become a marathon runner, you have to be disciplined. So I got up and I went out running and I started running up my hill and I felt so, it felt so hard. It was a struggle. And I'm like, you know, I think that today I'm going to just have to take this as a full blown sensitivity day you know like I'm gonna just do what I feel and I'm gonna take 24 hours and do only what I feel and when I did that my resistance lowered and I started running again right but I was running at the rate that I wanted to run I'd run for a hundred steps I'd literally count my steps because counting my steps for me is very relaxing so I'd count a hundred steps and then I'd slow down or stop and walk that felt great so here I was resisting my resistance to running, and I was feeling like shit. And then once I stopped resisting my resistance, I felt great, you know? And I think that this is part of, I think this is part of the, uh, the, the healing process, is understanding that we are cyclical, and that when we feel resistance, it's not that we are to punish ourselves and to beat ourselves up, but it's rather to say, hey, let's tune in and listen to why I'm resistant, and then let's nurture that part of me, and let's take a risk that we're going to be okay to not succeed in doing what we said we're going to do. Like this, this, this um, imperative that I have, that I have to finish this book by the end of July, or finish the stories. I don't have to finish the book. I just wanted to get my stories down by the end of July. Well, it's not happening. It's just not. I'm writing about all sorts of other things. I'm having, I'm doing all sorts of other things around the book, you know, but the stories aren't coming together like I wanted them to. And I checked in about this yesterday and I, I, I took a tarot card from my Druid Craft Tarot and the card I got was the Wheel of Fortune card. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Wheel of Fortune card represents cycles. So whenever it comes up, you're supposed to kind of start thinking in terms of cycles. Um, it's good fortune. It represents good fortune, but it's also getting you to remember that life is cyclical. It's also very representative of what happens with the moon card. And um, so I got the Wheel of Fortune and it's like, you know what? You've done a lot. You need to sit back and relax and enjoy what you've accomplished. Right now, fortune's in your favor. And it's a time to feel really excited and good and to revel in what you have going on. And I said, okay, fine. I'm going to look at myself as being a cyclical being. There's a new moon. Oh, shit. It's, there's a new moon um, that just happened on Monday. And um, now I'm feeling very much like, okay, I want to honor the cycles that the universe is offering me. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was fine yesterday, made sense, but I was still not fully buying that this morning when I got up and did my run. While I was on the hill um, and pushing up, I came to a very beautiful part in the, in the trail, and I just stopped. And I'm like, this is a cyclical run, and now's the time for me just to stop and pause and take in the beauty that surrounds me. Because Lord knows when I'm pushing up that hill, I'm not taking in the beauty that's around me. That is a big bird. Now that could be an eagle or a vulture. That is giant. I wonder if you can see that. That is phenomenal. I think that's an eagle. Wow. 
Okay. Ha. Huh. The omens. That is a positive omen, my friends. That is a positive omen that says, hey, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I stopped in the middle of my run and I took in all the beauty and I was overwhelmed by it. There were so many flowers around and trees and birds and bees and butterflies and just life and I, I started crying. And when I finished crying, I felt so good. I felt so empty. There was so much space. There was so much vibrancy. There was so much forgiveness <laughs> for not writing the book in the way that my ego <laughs> wanted me to write it. <coughs> and then I came back down the hill and I crawled into bed, you know, and just relaxed. And I took another tarot card and I said, all right, so tell me about this book writing. You know, I wanted to have it done. I asked the same question that I asked last night, but this time I pulled it from a different deck. I pulled it from the John Holland um, tarot deck. And <clears throat> I got the exact same card. I got the, uh, the Wheel of Fortune card. Same response, man. Like, chill out and relax. And so then I went upstairs and I, and I um, sorry, I, sorry, I, I pulled out my, um, my iPad and I saw that I had downloaded Conversations with God Book 2. And, at, and I started listening to it. I didn't even remember that I had downloaded it. I'm like, oh, score, you know, like, good win. So um, I started listening to it and Neil Donald Walsh, he says, God, I wanted to have this book written, you know, in like three months. And I, why was there a six month break? You know, I didn't want there to be a six month break. And so he started telling the exact same story that I'm telling. Like, why is it that I'm not able to get the book written in the time? And of course, God's answer was, actually, God's answer was not about the cycles of time and, you know, seasons and the moon, but actually... Um, his response or her response was um, more about your commitment level. Like, you know, you keep changing your mind. You say you want something and you start going toward it. And then you change your mind because of fear or because of limitation or because of self-doubt. And you, you change the course of the universe every single time you change your mind. So here you are, you're on path to something and then you get a thought or something happens and you get, a, you get afraid. You lose your commitment level. Next thing you know, you're on a different course and you're like, well, why can't, you know, why isn't this thing coming faster? Well, honey, you need to stay on track. Be of one mind, you know? And so I was like, totally, I'm totally into that, man. That resonated with me so deeply. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't feel like writing right now. I'm just going to enjoy this day and I'm going to come out here. And I'll tell you, I hopped out of bed. My energy was totally renewed. And I'm on this beautiful hike, hiking up here. I was hiking until I stopped to start talking. And I'm on this beautiful path out here in the middle of stuff, looking at eagles up in the sky soaring above me. You know, tell me, tell me that we are not creators of our own experience. Ha! We totally are. And I'm owning this. I'm owning this right here. This here land. <laughs> this land is my land. <laughs> sure does feel like it. All right, I'm signing off because my little phone just told me that I'm running out of juice. So signing off and really wishing you a day. Not just a day. <clears throat> wishing you a new moon of commitment to what's important for you. Wishing you a new moon of, um, of trust in your own dream and uh, understanding that this is a splendid, splendid world. You just have to call that in for yourself and recognize the splendor that's already around you. That's how you start. That's your gratitude. Except we don't call it gratitude. We call it appreciation. You recognize the splendor that you are right now. And then you start building on that. You don't say, I'm shitty. I want splendor. You say, I'm splendid. And I want to expand this shit. Right on. All right, friends. Signing off. Peace out. Bliss out.